Let's do some more work with geometric sequences. Suppose now the indices are years, and the terms of my sequence tell me the average storage capacity of a consumer hard drive sold in that year. Let's suppose it follows the following rule. Every year, the storage capacity increases by 40%. Let's find the first few terms of this sequence. A2020 should be 40% more than A2019, so that's 500 gigabytes times 1.4. That's 100% plus an extra 40%. A2021 is 1.4 times A2020. So this is 500 times 1.4 squared, and A2022 is 500 times 1.4 cubed. As a quick review, pause the video for a moment, think about a recursive way of describing this and an explicit way of describing this. The sequence is actually described to us in a recursive manner. It gives us our starting point, 2019, and it tells us that to find one year from the previous year, you multiply the previous year by 1.4. So this is our recursive definition. For the explicit definition, we can think back to 2020, 2021, and 2022. Every year after 2019, I multiply by 1.4 again. So the power of 1.4 in year n is going to be the years between that year and 2019. This is a geometric sequence, so that means the ratio between consecutive terms needs to be constant. Take a second and think about what that ratio is. The ratio in this case is 1.4. To get from one term to the next, I multiply by 1.4. Here's another quick review of chapter 8.1. Think about whether the sequence is monotonic, whether it's bounded, and whether it converges or diverges. The sequence only gets bigger, so it is monotonic. It gets bigger, but it never gets smaller. It is not bounded. It never gets less than zero, but there's no upper bound. There's no ceiling. There's no number that it never gets bigger than. Because there's no number that it never gets bigger than, it does not converge. In fact, the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence as we have described it is infinity. And remember, we call this a divergent sequence. The explicit definition that we found for that sequence is not unique in being so simple to write down. In fact, any time we have a geometric sequence, we're going to be able to write down the sequence explicitly in this very simple way. So if we start at zero, a sub zero is something. a sub one is that number times our ratio. a sub two is a sub one times our ratio, so a r squared, and that's why all of our terms just look like a times r to some index. What we saw before was a sub n was 500 to the times 1.4 to the power n minus 2019. So at first glance, this doesn't quite seem to fit the pattern, but I can rewrite this as 500 times 1.4 to the power n times 1.4 to the power negative 2019. So this is 500 divided by 1.4 to the power 2019, that whole constant times 1.4 to the n. So a is this constant, and r is 1.4. a, b, c, and d are four geometric series. For each one of these series, think about what is the common ratio and what is the limit as n goes to infinity.
The common ratio is the number we need to multiply each term by to get the next term. In the case of an, that ratio is 1 half. Each term, I multiply by another half. For bn, that ratio is negative 1 third. For cn, that ratio is negative 1.1. And for dn, that ratio is 1.001. Now let's think about limits. For a sub n, I'm taking 20 times a half times a half times a half times a half times a half. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and going towards zero. For bn, a similar thing is happening. It just happens to flip back and forth between positive and negative. So times a ninth times negative 1 over 27 times 1 over 81 and so on. So the absolute value is still going to zero even though the function wiggles again, wiggles between positive and negative. For cn, again, if we ignore this negative, the sizes of my terms are growing by 10% each time. 1.1 is 110%. So I start with 4, and then I add 10% of that, and 10% of that, and 10% of that, and 10% of that. So that's growing without bound. And in addition to growing without bound, it's flipping back and forth. Even indexed terms are positive, odd indexed terms are negative. So this limit does not exist. If I were to sketch my terms, not only are they getting bigger and bigger in terms of absolute value, but they're alternating between positives and negatives. So it'd look like this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. For dn, the behavior is similar. This is a lot closer to 1. This is a tenth of a percent. I'm adding a tenth of a percent every time. But I claim this is still going to blow up without bounds. This is a divergent series. And the particular way it diverges is it goes to infinity. Let's actually find a few terms of this to see that that's true. Let's say I have 1.001 and I raise it to the power 100. Okay, that's just a little bit bigger than one. What if I take 1.001 and raise it to the power 10,000? Well, now we're getting somewhere. Now I'm at 22,000. What if I take 1.001 and raise it to the power a million? Now I'm at 1.2 times 10 to the 434. So this is a one with 434 zeros after it. So because we're taking a number that's pretty close to one, it starts off growing slowly, but this is still exponential growth. This is still going to grow without bound. It's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger than any number you can say. So its limit is infinity. With those principles in mind, we can, in general, figure out the limits of geometric sequences. I'm multiplying by this common ratio, and what we saw was if r is less than 1, it's shrinking. If r is bigger than 1, it's growing. And we're talking about absolute values. So this really gives us four different cases. If the absolute value of r is less than 1, then every time I multiply by r, I'm shrinking my value closer and closer to 0, like a half of a half of a half of a half, or even 90% of 90% of 90% of 90%. Over time, this is going to approach 0. On the other hand, if the absolute value of r is greater than 1, then the absolute value of my terms are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So this limit, this is going to be a divergent limit could be infinity, could be negative infinity, or it could be the case that it alternates between a hugely positive number and a hugely negative number. If r is equal to 1, then what do my sequence terms look like? It's a, a times r, a times r squared, a times r cubed, and so on. It's a pretty straightforward sequence that's just a repeated every single term. So if r is equal to 1, then my limit is a. If r is negative 1, then what does my sequence look like? a times r to the 0, a times r to the 1, a times r squared, a times r cubed, and so on. 
If a is equal to zero, these are all zeros, but if a is non-zero, then this is alternating and not getting close to one particular number. It's flipping back and forth, toggling between two different numbers, so that limit does not exist.